Happy Valentine's Day. Hope everyone is having a great day so far. <laughs> Hello, Benny. <laughs> Supporting the homies. <laughs> so, today is Valentine's Day. It's a special day for a lot of reasons, but today I decided to do something with love. So, Daddy, <laughs> Dream Daddy, goddamn, Dream Daddy is the choice of game for today in celebration. So, let's just go right into it. And my follow goal is still actually this, this corner, up in that corner, going for 30 now instead of 20. And that's all good stuff. So yeah, how is everyone doing today? How are you, Benny? Val Did I say Valentine's? <laughs> Follow or else. He he's the the threatening figure in my chat. Valentine's. <laughs> okay, let's get Dream Daddy up and loaded. It looks like a lot of fun. Um. Not too worried about it being long. I don't think it's too long, so um, I should be able to get a lot of it done. I'm hoping it doesn't go on, like, too... what's the word? Oh, is that a bit loud? A little loud. Hope it doesn't go on, like, for too many days. I'm hoping to get through a big chunk of it. That's fine. That should be fine. Okay, let's start. I have, I haven't seen anybody play this. Eat plenty of carbs the night before a big game. Z Z Z. What's my controls anyway? Oh, just clicking. Z Z Z Z. -Z. Someone's sleeping heavy. Dad. Z Z Z Z. -Z. Dad, wake up. <laughs> Pretend to be dead. Five more minutes. Uh, let my tongue roll out of my mouth and stop breathing. Amanda shakes me. Come on, Dad. This hasn't worked on me since I was six. Sorry, Amanda. This is the end for me. <laughs> so dramatic. Dad, I swear to God. Amanda, I bequeath you all of my earthly possessions. Spread my ashes over <laughs> my recliner. I'm expecting a lot of dad jokes. Okay, well, your corpse better get into the moving van because it's leaving soon. Oh. I finally open my eyes and sit up. I'm lying in the middle of the living room, spinning in a moving box. I yawn and stretch. Whee. Oh, yeah. I have it change colors when it goes over a different, like, image in the background. So it might look a bit weird. Morning, Amanda Panda. That's my daughter there. Dad breath. Go brush your teeth. Dad breath. <laughs> Practice makes permanent. Jesus. Moving pictures. Oh. Did... Oh, I get to build a dad? Oh no. <laughs> what dad bod? I need a... I I don't know. Oh no. Oh my goodness. I didn't even know this uh, this was gonna happen. Is that just the hair is the difference? Unrealistic beauty standards. Yeah, really. I don't know. Bod. Wait, I said hair. Oh, I see. Let's give him body hair. Cause... Uh, double chin or butt chin, whatever it's called. That's okay. Okay. Ooh. What the? I could make, um, Super Saiyan, or just normal Saiyan, also option. His eyebrows are still blonde though, so, I don't know. Goku, that's what it was. Oh man, look at that hairline though. <laughs> let's, let's do something funky. He's gonna be... Uh, a friendly chap. 
Maybe not. Yeah, let's go with a purple man bun. <laughs> Looking good, Dad. I'm gonna be saying daddy a lot, balding. <laughs> okay, fair, fair, fair. Um, I don't know. I'll just go with brown then. I wanna change the eyebrows though. Facial hair? Nope. Brows, there we go. Um, man bun is worse than the hair color. God damn it. <laughs> I don't know. There's a select few choices. I don't think it gets better. <laughs> His eyes, I think, is staring into my soul. A floof. Just, okay, that's kind of as normal as we're getting. Unless it's this one. I don't know. Sidebar current. Swoopy hair. Swoopy. It says swoopy, so we do swoopy. Eyes. Yes. Yes! <laughs> Yes! This is all I need. He's done. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh no. Mandy Pandy. A panda? What was her? My daughter's name. Manda Panda? This is your father now. Yes. No, I can't! <laughs> For a life of pain. He's seen things. He's done things he's not happy for. Happy with. Oh my goodness. Oh my, I can't. Let's, let's get, make him a bit rough. Give him, nope, I can't. Oh Jesus. Okay, that kind of ties it all together. <laughs> um, I cover up some of those. No, let's not cover up those eyes. I need to celebrate them. Oh jeez, I can do piercings? Well, it looked like he had a- he has a scar through his- what the actual hell? Egg nip tea. Eggs- egg nips tea. Oh my god. This is was- this was not what I was expecting when I came into this game. But, here it is. I don't- oh, I left a piercing. I don't want piercing there. Oh no. He's just tired. I'm gonna reflect myself. You messed this guy up bad. Yeah, he's- <laughs> It's Valentine's Day. Let's do the heart thing. I think it works. I think he's done. <laughs> um, I like that. That's good. Do I have to name him? I gotta name him. Okay. Oh, I forgot to change his eyes. Well, it is what it is. Oh, what should I name him? Oh no. What's a dad name? I guess that doesn't really make sense though. Because anything could be a dad name. What what do I have here? Lemmy? I have Lemmy Sparkling Lemonade. Let's call it Lemmy. Lemmy Sour. <laughs> what? Oh, I guess that goes back to that other menu. I I'm happy with him. Be that dad. He's gonna be the ultimate. Um. Valentine's. Peter Weller actually has a PhD in history. Okay, I'm guessing that's one of the dads. Did you fall asleep packing? I think I did. <laughs> I got most of it done, I think. Uh, searching around the room, it looks like I did a pretty good job. Every box is sealed except for one. Wait, straggler. What's in it? Looking into the box, I see a bunch of old photos in little photo albums. Whoa, I haven't seen these in years. Pull out all the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin to look through it. Through it. Ugh. I'm the coolest baby I've ever seen. That's pretty that's pretty cool, I have to say. The only way your father and I, the only way your mother and I. Ooh. 
I like I like the whole when he stole her as a baby. <laughs> I'm gonna go with mother because this is all about daddies, so I'm gonna he's turning a new leaf. The only way your mother and I can get you to stop crying was to put the sunglasses on you. But whenever we tried to take them off, he started crying again. Oh. He said the first two years of your What? <laughs> two first two years of your life with sunglasses on? <laughs> nice. Halloween when you were maybe four. <gasps> That's so cute. I think my my actual brother had something like this, but it was red. Little dinosaur one without the crown and the tutu, but Oh my god, that dragon costume. Couldn't decide between being a princess or a dragon, so you went with both. Oh. Princess dragon? Mm. Why do I remember crying in that dragon costume? You saw yourself in the mirror and realized you were afraid of dragons. Seeing yourself inside the dragon's mouth was a realization of your greatest fear, I think. Mm. Yep, right, right, yep, definitely repressed that memory. I should hope so. And this was in your horse phase. Oh god. Oh no. <laughs> Even she said it. Dad. I believe you named that plush horse Sir Horsington the Brave. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was his mandal lunges for the photo, but I quickly snatch it away and hold it above her head with my <laughs> superior dad arms. Nice try. This is important blackmail for later down the road. Go ahead and try me. I've seen pictures of you in your ska band. He definitely looks like he was in a ska band. Ouch, kid. Huh. <laughs> that communist manifesto had a chance back in the day? I look up into the distance and reminisce about that rad horn selection section. Hey, it's Emma P. Ugh. No, Dad, that's Emma R. I didn't meet Emma P until high school. Honey, I promise you wholeheartedly that I will never stop mixing those two up. Dad. Emma R... R's been my best friend since I was seven. Give it, like, a little bit of effort. I mean. Emma P was the one who... Oh, let's... Let's make her a rebel. Try to steal people's pets. Oh, I guess she is by default. Fire to Fleming tennis ball at the police station. Holy sh... <laughs> let's not do that one. Let's... This is, I think, the least awful of them. Lighter fluid, tennis ball, tennis racket, right? Dad, that was you. Oops. Oh right, I was a wild child. <laughs> a ska band throwing flaming baseballs at police office police offices? I was six when you did it. Okay, Amanda. I wasn't aiming for the police station, I just happened that there was a police station in the vicinity where I wanted to hit a flaming tennis ball. Ugh. Yeah, I remember you explain that explaining that to the police. They didn't blame me either. Yeah. Anyway, I gotta show this to Emma R later. She'll get a kick out of it. The first photography award you ever won? Oh, that's a ladybug. Yeah, and it got us $20 gift cards to McFridays. Yes. Then you got food poisonings from the cheesy Todada Blatz Blast. I can't read. Tostada Blast. I think you mean food poisoning, you know, with a Z. Food po- Oh no, is this gonna be super painful with like dad puns and stuff? So I'm gonna feel it deep in my soul. Poo poo blast. <laughs> Dad, you still can't drive past McFridays without gagging. Huh. Or still can't. So proud of you though. Amanda reaches deep down to the box and pulls out one last photo. Hmm. Aww. Neither of us say a word. We stare at the photo for a long moment. Uh. Finally decide to break the silence. No, 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 no. I, I'm the dad. This is my daughter. <laughs> Unless you're talking about me. Maybe. I, I finally decided to break the silence. This was the day you were born. Oh, so there is a choice. Which one? Um. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. We got into a car accident right... Damn, right there in the hospital parking lot? It wasn't anything big, just a fender better, but of course I was freaking out. And the old lady who crashed into us was freaking out. I didn't know what to do. But your mother, oh man. She holds my hand and looks me directly in the eyes. The calmest I've ever seen her, she says. 
It's okay. It's all gonna be okay. Oh. She was right, you know. Stare at the picture for longer, maybe too long. I miss her. I can't imagine, even imagine what it must be like for Amanda. I wonder when she... Did she pass away? She passed me on the back. Ah. Come on, Pops. We gotta finish packing. The movie man won't wait forever. You're right. Oh. Amanda and I pile into the car and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your mother and I bought this place almost 20 years ago. Mm. Hey, remember when I shattered the front window playing catch? These people are just very destructive. I'm here for it, though. You always had very strong arms. Ah. Hey, remember when I shattered the other front window pretending to be a robot who breaks windows? <laughs> you were a very imaginative child. Child? Imaginative. Is that way? If it's imaginative, it wouldn't have actually happened. She's just creative. And then she acts on it. Hey, remember when I broke that back? <laughs> we get it, Amanda. You break stuff. Damn. And there'll be plenty more stuff for me to break in the new place. She's raring to go. She's just like, memories and stuff. <laughs> memories to make and stuff to break. Yeah. You ready? We sit in silence for a moment. I watch my daughter grow up in this house. It will forever place hold a place in my heart, but it stings a little to leave it behind. I'm ready. Movie man begins to pull away and I get into the I get the car into position to follow it. I watch our house, our old house, disappear into the rear room mirror. So, so what? So sell me on the cool new pad. I clear my throat and do my best cheesy announcer voice. <clears throat> Nestled in beautiful, scenic downtown Maple Bay, our new house features... Oh. <laughs> oh. Let's do that. Honey, have you ever heard... <laughs> have you ever had dirty clothes? Yeah. For most of my life, yes. Well, worry about that no longer, as our new place features mach... What? Machinations that will not only clean your clothes, but dry them directly thereafter. Hmm. An upper class lux luxury, I fear. The concept of clean clothes is no longer in the hands of the fat cats upstairs, <laughs> sweetie. Anyway, it's also smaller than our last house. Cozier, one might argue. Look at them just banter. Just good spin. Spin. I think that's great. Oh, my words are just twisting today. We won't be closer to a lot of cool stuff than we can walk to. So I don't have to waste gas, and I mean, trying to park downtown is, you know, Amanda. You know we're gonna, you're gonna have to learn how to par parallel park at some point, right? Hmm. Not gonna happen, pops. I love this, this, like, relationship they got going on. Like, this is great. I think someone needs to do a three-point turn on their attitude. Oh. I don't know how to do that either. <laughs> have you met the neighbors yet? Not yet. But the neighborhood seemed pretty quiet. Hmm. Oh, all the neighbors are the dads. Oh no. So you won't have to chase away any rowdy teens off your lawn. You're the very teen you mock when you say You're the very teen you mock when you say that, honey. <laughs> I'm in my last year of high school, I'm practically dust. She's old. <laughs> yeah, you're a real don't you dare. Dad joke, senior. <laughs> Damn it. Dad, I know where this is going. Citizen. <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore that. But I won't forget it. So that- so what item number one of the new house? Well, first we need to forge a path through the solid wall of boxes blocking the living room. I still have to install the wash and dryer. We need to go grocery shopping. Pops, cool your jets. You have to promise me that we're gonna take a break and explore the neighborhood. Okay, okay, you're right. We'll get some work done and then we'll check the area out. We got a plan. Pull up to the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mowed and the for sale sign is still in the yard. That should probably be taken down. Hiya! Swift kick from Amanda. The for sale sign is no more. Good job. Nice form, sweet pea. I got a problem with authority. That was my nickname when I was a child. Nick Sweet Pea. Um, I'm so proud. You should be. That was a good high kick. Man, all that karate chopping tuckered me out. I could really go for a sandwich. An ice cream sandwich. She has she has her priorities set up. Sweetie, it's 10 a.m. Did you even see all the dogs in the park nearby? Need some coffee ASAP. Need to unpack first. 
Dream Daddy's going good so far. We're still just in the, the beginning of them moving into this new area. As much as I would like to enjoy a delicious and healthy ice cream sando right now, we got work to do, kiddo. We need to make it snappy because there are five sealed crates of DVD box sets blocking off the bathroom and I gotta pee real bad. Hmm. Well, don't let the entire cast of all 13 seasons of Shark Tank, but with actual sharks standing your way. Let's get to it. I need that to be a sh an actual show. It's never too early to invest in a personal I IRA. They're kind of a waste, though. I get to work unpacking the various boxes around the living room. A couple hours pass and I get some work, good work done. The washer and dryer unit is both washing and drying and we can actually walk through the living room without tripping over boxes. First visitor already? Oh no. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? A handsome clean cut man says <laughs> Ran a sheet of plate of cookies. Well, hello? Oh no. Yeah. Joseph. Oh, where are my manners? My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. He he does not like he deserves any of this man's attention. <laughs> hi. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Lemmy. That's what my name is. I saw the moving, moving van and I thought I'd bring over some cookies. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Joseph leans in and whispers. But between you and me, she just sprinkled in the chocolate chips. Good one. We both share a laugh. Kids, right? Yes. Wow, cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. Amanda disappears with the cookies. Standing pretty close. Yeah. Well, she's grabbing those cookies pretty fast, too. Amanda, come. And she's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Oh. Children in general are just tough. I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try to raise more than two. I have four kids. Oh shit! <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Digging myself a hole? Uh oh, I meant. Oh. Don't worry, he didn't mean to be rude. Oh damn. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I met. My social life is already in the tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. Uh, he's, he's dramatic a little. Okay. I, is the missus around? No, not anymore. She died. Damn. Straight to the point. Oh. Uh. I'm sorry for your loss. No, no. It's alright. I'm sure you didn't mean to be rude. Let's throw the words back at him. This is uncomfortable. We stand here quietly for a minute, minute acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. I love this. I just... This is what being an adult is really about. Nobody knows what the hell they're doing. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? Look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door, opening it. I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile. Hey, I'm your new neighbor, Joseph. I promise not to, promise to not talk about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue for the cul-de-sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors in our community. What do you say, pal? He's so friendly. Oh. He's also very a, a big nerd. <laughs> that sounds great. My daughter... Amanda and I would love to stop by. Also, four kids is perfectly normal amount of children to have. <laughs> we shake hands to seal the deal. Yeah. Well, neighbor, I'll see you at 3 p.m. sharp on Saturday. It's a date. No. <laughs> sure thing, neighbor. Joseph starts to walk to starts to walk away, but stops to think for a second and turns around. Oh. Hey, in all seriousness, raising a kid on your own can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff. I'm the youth minister at the church down the street. Oh no. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. Wink. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. My receding hairline does that, you know. I'm with that. Joseph is gone. Joseph's gone. He seemed nice and just like ate all the cookies. Walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. That was the smoothest recovery I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See? You're already fitting in great. Yeah, you know, just one person down. Where'd those cookies go? They're gone. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, they weren't very good. Oh. So you ate them all anyway? I guess that makes it break time. Any ideas? Let's... Joseph probably wants his plate back. I think we get a ton of good 
neighbor points if we bring this back. We're gonna be the oh, I could have just brought it back as like get together. Oh well, now it's gonna be awkward. We're gonna be the best neighbors in this whole cul-de-sac. God damn it. We're gonna kick all the other neighbors butts. That's not very with kindness. There we are. Meta and I step outside. Shoot, I'm not actually what sure what house it is his. Yeah, that's right. That has our guess. It's the big one with all the well-groomed blonde children sitting in the yard. Yeah. Good eye, kid. And remember, we need to make a positive first impression here. Keep it light. We walk up to the kids and wave. They they look like they want to murder me. Hey guys, is your dad around? They all just stare at us blankly. Children these children are creepy. She's standing. I just wanted to uh, return this nice plate and thank you for the cookies. Jeez, these definitely are Joseph kids. They all look exactly like him. Christy? Whoa. They were really good. Christian? I mean, I heard they were good. I didn't get to eat any. Chris? I chuckled nervously. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're just gonna set this plate down on the ground real gentle and then back away slowly. Right, Dad? Right. That's what we're gonna do. Just imagine going up to three kids and just putting a plate down and then stepping away quickly. Kids' eye, The kids' eyes bore, and, bore into us as we scurry away. I can feel their gaze on my back even as we approach our house. Huh. I need something to get my mind off those carbon copy kids. Um... Okay, they really want to go to the yeah. park, so let's just go to the park. Let's go pet some dogs. Dog time. Don't eat too close to your bedtime. That's a good piece of advice. Men and I begin to stroll through the neighborhood. I can't believe, believe how beautiful it is outside. Kids are playing in the street, the flowers are in bloom, and the faint smell of a nearby barbecue drifts through the air. This place is nice. Mm -hmm. Too nice. <laughs> Suspicious right off the bat. I don't trust it. Good eye, honey. <laughs> you can never be too careful. See that baby in the stroller over there? Government operative. Hmm. We're on to you, baby. We walk for a while and eventually end up at a small park. Toddlers chase each other through the playground and dogs of all shapes and sizes romp through the grass. It's pretty crowded, but Amanda spots a nice empty bench. We start to make our way over there when... Heads up! Ow. It scared actually, that actually scared me. Um, a frisbee suddenly hits me in the face. Woof. <laughs> I can't believe this made me bark on stream. God, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a corgi with a, a neat plaid handkerchief tied around its neck bounds up to me, wagging its tail. I like your necktie. Rough. Oh. Gotta stop. He runs around in a circle and nudges my leg with his nose. Oh god, this is the cutest dog. I do like corgis. Corgis are cute. Yes. Not saying it. <laughs> How long do I have left? Oh, what's that? I'm already too late. My fate was predetermined for me long ago. I have no real agency in this cruel lifetime. Talk about a midlife crisis. You're right, I'm the master of my domain, for fate is unknowable. Thank you, wise dog. <laughs> you definitely could have caught that. A guy in a Hawaiian shirt jogs over to us and takes a frisbee from me. <laughs> you know, for frisbees are traditionally caught with your hands, not your face. Oh, I didn't know. So the aim at people's heads, it's a new technique. Catch it with my teeth next time. Well, that, because he did hit me in the head, but I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, I'm just messing with you. I'm Brian, by the way. I'm Lemmy, and this is my daughter, Amanda. I look over to Amanda, only to find her sitting on the ground, rubbing the dog's tummy. Ah. Hi. Oh. Your dog's cool. Ah, old Maxwell sure loves the attention. It's great to see another father-daughter out here on such a sunny day. Do they all have daughters? Where's yours? Brian gestures over to the nasty, grassy knoll where a young girl sits on a checkerboard or checkered blanket. Checkerboard. <laughs> She's reading a book better, bigger than her head. She puts it down and heads over to us. Hey. This is Daisy. She's Richie reading the brothers. Oh, nice. I love that book. Um, her teacher tells me that she has the reading comprehension skills of a high schooler. Middle school, eh? Oh. 
How old is she? Ten. Not even middle school. Maybe. Depends on where you are. She's a precious little youngster. Whoa. My natural dad instincts kick in. I must brag about my child's accomplishments. Oh no. It's happening. I like the- Oh god. <laughs> Go on, Daisy. Tell him about yourself. Um, I- Ryan, that's my girl. Amanda, get in there. I choose you. Amanda, okay, okay. Let me say P. 80 Brian's HP. 80. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Let's do it. Let me. Amanda's here. Just recently won a local photography award. Wow. Congratulations. Brian loses 10 HP. <gasps> Brian, Daisy's actually just won a statewide poetry contest. Oh no. You lose 15. Let me say HP 16. Oh, I don't even know what this means. Let's try it. Can't switch daughters. I only is your only daughter. Okay. Oh god. Item? Do we have an item? Oh, oh. Spelling bee photo? Band-aid? Spelling bee photo. From link through your phone's browser, you managed to pull up a photo of Amanda winning her 10th grade spelling bee. This is tense. Wow, congratulations, Amanda. Daisy is getting prepped for her annual spelling bee right now. Hopefully this will be the th her third win in a row. God damn, this child. Yikes, you lose 5 HP. Brian, Daisy just started a weekly chess club at her computer- or elementary school computer lab. She's the president too, of course. God damn. Dang, my high school doesn't have a chess club or a computer lab. Oh, the new one? Lose 10 HP. He's winning. Ah. Uh, oh no. Ah. Uh, oh. You wrinkle coffee. Oh no, this is probably not very good. Off your back pocket. Dad. <laughs> Awesome grades, Brian. Lose 25 HP. She's smart. Cool. You really carry that around everywhere? <laughs> Such an embarrassing father. Ouch, maybe it's kind of weird. You lose 5 HP. Oh no. Daisy sold enough candy bars this year to get the top prize. A canoe? We're, we're taking it out next week. How is it even possible? Man, I could barely get out one of those sticky hand things. Oh, you grab it and you like throw it at stuff and it sticks. Um, it's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Okay, I'm just gonna have to flee at this point. Oh. Oh no. Oh, I clicked it anyway. Let's just do child art and then we'll flee. You unfurl your wallet to reveal a tiny copy of a drawing of a cornucopia Amanda did in the first grade. That's good. That's good. Cute. It isn't very impressive, but Amanda genuinely appreciates you holding on to it. Aww. Brian loses 10 HP and you regain, regain 20 HP. Did I mention Daisy said her first word at 10 months? Daddy? Amanda's was potty, potty. Still cute, but maybe this isn't the time to bring it up. Mine was cat. <laughs> you lose 10 HP. Who's... Oh, we're tied. Fuck. When is it over? <laughs> Oh, I don't have an extra daughter. Oh, I get a daughter. What to do? Last week, unprompted Amanda, Amanda helped an old woman with her grocery bags. It's extra powerful. Brian loses 20 HP. <gasps> He's 15 to 15 away from down. Daisy is never here. Has all of her adult teeth. Never had a cavity either. Amanda subconsciously pushes her lips together to hide her teeth. It's extra powerful. You lose 20 HP. Oh no. Let's flee. You really want to flee? Oh no. I'm gonna die at this rate. Yes, let's flee. Amanda, get out of there. Amanda, don't have to ask me twice. Boy, what are we doing here? Putting our kids on competing pedestals. It's been such a treat getting to know you two. And that's what matters. Good, even his cowardice is better than mine. God, even his car just doesn't know. So I take it you guys are new to the neighborhood. <laughs> just back to normal. Yeah, we just moved in. Do you live around here? Hmm. Yeah, we live in that cul-de-sac down the next to the coffee shop. <laughs> what a coincidence. That's where we live too. Small world, yeah? Daisy and I are in the little ranch style house on the corner. Uh I know that house. It's like it's just like ours, but slightly bigger and better landscape. Does this guy have to outdo me in everything? He's a Damn, you're really leveling yourself against other people. What a lovely place. Well, I don't want to take up your any more of your time. It's really nice meeting you guys. I'll have to stop by at some point. Yeah, definitely. Bye. 
Fred and Daisy walk further into the park with Maxwell ha happily trotting along in tow. They have a perfect dog, too. Do you get the feeling that he was trying to up one up, one up us? Yeah. <laughs> trying and succeeding. I can't believe that kid's only 10. What was I even doing at her age? I believe you had a bit of thing for horses. <laughs> Shame that didn't pan out. Could have majored in competitive horse studies. It's, it's, it's too late for minor in horse creative writing. These jokes. Too close to the truth, Dad. Ugh. Let us never again speak of the f fantastic adventures of horse of Sir Horsington the Brave, an epic in seven parts by Amanda Sauer. She tried writing a story about her stuffy. That's cute. <laughs> we laugh off the horse epic and walk around the park a bit more, enjoying the day. Uh, let's go to the coffee shop. Maybe we can meet someone else. I got my hand on a nice hot, nice hot cup of the old bean juice. <laughs> or I'm gonna be useless all day. I don't drink coffee. I think we passed the coffee shop on the way here. Maybe we could check that out. Let's do it. Oh, that is all stressful. It's rude to ask people about their mysterious hand tattoos. <laughs> we walk across the street to the coffee spoon, a cute little place on the corner. Man, this is such convenient walking distance from our place. I mean, I guess. Hmm. What's wrong? Why would I go somewhere else to drink coffee on a couch when I could just drink better coffee at home on my own couch and not have to make awkward eye contact with other people? Speaks the truth. At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't going to come up and sit on the recliner next to me and I won't feel like a little weird about it because technically it's he's not sitting at my table but he is very much within my personal zone. Dad. And what's the etiquette when you have a dirty mug? Is there a bin? Do you go set it up on the counter? This guy is anxious as hell. <laughs> because you don't know where else to put it? Or do you leave it there and feel your face flush hot with shame as you consider the possibility that there is in fact a bin somewhere out of sight but now you're just that jerk who left their mug? Dad. Are you just afraid to meet new people? Yes, Amanda. <laughs> we walk inside. Inside the coffee shop is incredibly warm and inviting. Vinyl records line the walls, patron lounge around the well-worn in couches. Some cool tunes spin in the record player next to a little stage. Oh, it has a stage too. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? What's with the name? Oh, oh it's a. Uh, oh no, I have to sneeze. Uh, it's it's kind of dumb. Um, I guess mentioned a this poem I like and I thought it was a good idea at the time it's supposed to uh, I suppose now it's a good idea because like the business is still running <laughs> but people ask me that question all the time and I give and I give them the same answer every time now I'm standing here rambling and I'm sure we're all getting more and more uncomfortable the more I keep talking but man we're in it now and I can't stop this man is also just as anxious as I am we're on the same wave same wavelength we're all just so what will be <laughs> I scan the chalkboard menu and I'm Im immediately overwhelmed. Yeah, super anxious, man. I'll have... Ooh, Godspeed, you. <laughs> Black coffee. Iced tea. Take it. Oh. Oh. Chai Antwood. Chai Antwood. Spicy. I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. The Antwood is a South African rap group. They're pretty well known for their, uh... Their... <sighs> God damn it. I found them in high school, actually. Um, uh, Vickley mentioned in hyper style and music videos. Their music is as catchy as it is disturbing. Yes, lots of Af South African uh, swears and or Afrikaans squ swears and I like their earlier stuff better than their newer stuff. Then again, I'm doing the same thing. Oh. We're coming right up. And for you, I'll have a uh, my. <laughs> Macchiato Di Marco, please. Hey. Coming right up. Do you want the small, medium, or big? S <sighs> Biggie Smalls. Uh, medium. Ah. Wait, is Biggie Smalls big or small? Uh, I should change that, shouldn't I? Matt sets to making our drinks, and Amanda and I take our seat on one of the couches. Why does his name only have one T? What's his deal? Okay. Uh, let the man make his puns. We're cooler bands. They're cooler bands than you listen to anyway. 
Well, I wonder what happened to Beyonce. Hey, Scar was cool once. <laughs> once. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than our couch, but it's alright. Good lumbar support. You sink right into it. Okay, it's comfier than our couch. Amanda nudges me. This place is uh, right next to our house, and that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable about with talking to other people as you are. Great, great kind of method to have if you're opening a cafe. Uh, you should totally become friends with him. I think I might. I don't know. Come on, what do we say about meeting new people? I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and don't go outside and don't talk to people. That's kind of like a call out right now, and I feel a little bit... <laughs> I'm called out. See, we're making progress. Considering this game is made by YouTubers, they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> Matt sets out our drinks down at our table and I immediately burn the roof of my mouth. Good one. Hi, we're new in the neighborhood. I'm Amanda and this is my dad, Lemmy. Hey. Oh, right on. Pleased to meet you both. Hey. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the sh Everybody has daughters, just all girls. You two might get along. Yeah, I'm sure we will maybe come in from time to time. Amanda kicks my leg from under the table. I'm sure we'll be in here a lot. You know what? Let me get your guy's opinion on something. Matt goes into the back and comes up with a fresh plate of something that smells amazing. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe and I need help coming up with a name for it. I'm gonna have to taste test it first so we can uh, get the full p flavor profile of, you know, and really appreciate the flavor sensations of Amanda nods vigorously. She knows this game. <laughs> yeah, we need that Nana bread uh, taste if you want us doing free creative labor. I think that would be... Uh, uh, I taught her well. We have trained for this day. Why is the dad talking his daughter around? All these... <laughs> Maybe it, he's just like a magnet. And then she's just following along. I think she's very amused by it. She's like, get to know these people, please. <laughs> I've taught her well. We have trained for this day. Well, she's like, what, 16 or something? I don't think she's interested in dads at that age. Probably more guys her age. Or maybe girls. I don't know. Not judging. I just want to give you guys free banana bread anyway. Right. Yes, that. Matt service serves us each a piece and Amanda and I happily chow down. Now I want banana bread. This is amazing. Thanks. The secret ingredient. I can't stand this. Oh my god. I love it so much. So any ideas? I'm stumped. Well, I think I might only be able to give you dad bands puns, but I'll give it a shot. Banana bread Kennedy's. No. Grateful banana bread. No. Right said banana bread. I kind of like that because it rhymes. Fr like right said Fred, but now it's about banana bread. I think the youngsters would like it despite not getting it. That actually has a nice ring to it. Thank you. Really? Yeah. Right said banana bread. Strong decisions. That's art, baby. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized it doesn't sound good coming out of my mouth and maybe I should just leave saying baby to the professionals. <laughs> Enjoy your coffee. Thanks, baby. <laughs> ah! See, it sounds good when you say it. So much. Catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. Our R's meet just for a moment. I hastily look away, hoping it didn't catch me staring. Who is that? To finish up our drinks and head out. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. Okay, now that we're full of caffeine, where to? I need a nap. We've exhausted all the other routes. We just had coffee. <laughs> Have you ever known me to play by the rules? Your father is a rebel, sweetie. Now all aboard the train to Sleepy Town Junction. Oh, Sleepy Town Junction. As we're walking home, I hear heavy, heavy footsteps come up behind us. Lemmy, bro. bro! I turn around and am greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Look at this guy. He also has an eyebrow, like, scar. Craig? Oh. Bro. Bro. Holy, I made my guy really pale. <laughs> Holy wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Everybody's like has this nice tan going on. It's been too long, dude. Oh wow, you look great. <laughs> Baby is piloting a man. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, I cleaned up my act. Clean up my act? Are you kidding me? He's ripped. Oh, we're talking about the muscles on him. Okay. Yes, he is. The baby is the true brain of this walking operation. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while too. Mm. Amanda, dude, you probably don't remember me, but you're so big now. Muscles would be nice to have. Says the one that goes to the gym all the time. <laughs> hello and hello, cute baby. Oh, thank you. The last time I saw you, I think you were about her size. This is River. That's a cute name. Actually, I have a cousin. Her name is Lake, so... Hi, say hi, River. He picks up her tiny wrist and waves it around. River gurgles happily. Oh, that's so cute. Are you babysitting? Oh. Nah, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time. Feels like one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both far fathers. Where you been, man? I was working out in California and just relocated the business back to Maple Bay. When you lose an entire person and body weight off your body, you still look shit with muscles. You slim down or something, Benny? Like on pop it? Uh, yeah, on purpose or like nah? No kidding. Amanda and I just moved to this side of town. How's Smashley doing? Oh. I mean Ashley. I mean three hundred lips, and I'm guessing like muscle mixed in with that. There's an entire person. He's still. Well, I think everybody looks different, right? No matter what the size is. I mean, Ashley. Ashley is her name. Oh, okay. I mean, Ashley. Ashley. Is... Oh, I said that already. Smashley. I'm guessing this is a girl from college. And her name was Ashley, and they made jokes about it and called her Smashley because he was trying to smash. <laughs> She actually still goes by Smashly. <laughs> I know we were divorced last year. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude, I'm so sorry. It's all no news. We take turns taking care of River and the twins. They have other kids too. It's all copacetic. Yeah, it's like when you're trying to get good muscles, you have to it has to have a really good balance of like carbs and cardio and all that kind of stuff and lifting. It's a big mess. My brother-in-law does the same. He's still he he's like pretty thin, so he tries to bulk up. But twins, you you have three kids. He has a good metabolism, so oh. ain't life something, bro? Right? Kegstan Craig is a father. Three Kegstan Craig and Smashley. What a couple! Oh. <laughs> Kegstan Craig. Oh, oh haha. It was my old college nickname. Just like Smashley. <laughs> Got it because he did a lot of keg stands. I wonder. Yeah. Oh. Thing where you do a handstand on a keg and then drink it from the keg not the yeah. easiest thing to do so, uh, to be honest really he was very good at it you really need like people holding both legs on each side of you oh hmm. uh, bro I, I hate to be that kind of guy but i'm in the middle of a my daily jog and i really got to keep up my heart rate bought river brought river along for you know resistance training <laughs> she probably weighs like what 30 pounds and their other friend but chug berry <laughs> Guess how he got his name? It's an unfortunate way of drinking alcohol that nobody ever talks about, but we'll keep the nickname. <laughs> you jog daily? I jog yearly. He's not active. On January 1st, when I promise myself that I'm gonna jog daily for the rest of the year, but I give up after 30 minutes and just walk home. Uh, that's what I was doing on New Year's. I took a walk. So it's never too late to get back in to it. Dude, you should join me sometime. Get ripped. I don't know. Hey. Come on, it would be fun. We could grab breakfast afterwards, catch up. We could do a bro brunch like the good old days, dude. All right, sure. Sounds great. Great. Let's get that going soon. I better get moving. It's good to see you guys. Craig gives a little little waves. <laughs> Craig gives a little wave, puts his earbuds back in, and jogs off. Ugh. I can't believe Craig is ripped and has kids. I'm reeling. Hmm. I mean, you also have a child, but you can't job while wearing a baby. Shake them up. That's true. You can't shake babies. Please don't shake babies. 
And why is that? That's why you can see, you see like people running with like strollers and not in carry, carry things. Um, why is that? The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for any living thing, including and especially in himself. One time I watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. That's disgusting. <laughs> he opened the, a new jar of marinara sauce and then he drank it like it was a thing normal people do and I was uh, it was unholy and then I asked him what the hell he was doing and he just said I quote, it's basically a smoothie bro. <laughs> no! <laughs> I mean, technically, he's not wrong. He jogs. He was jogging. He's like a totally different person. Anyway, we better get home. I have plenty of time to reflect on how old I was feeling later. Amanda and I flop down on the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Huh. Too bad we're gonna put my stuff right back in the boxes in a few months. What? No, don't say that. Huh? Oh, Dad, it's gonna be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. Oh, is she gonna graduate soon? Is that why? Oh, right, she's a senior, so... Yeah, she is. You're my little girl. It's gonna be weird not having you around. Well, I highly doubt she's gonna take everything from home to, a, like, a college dorm room. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. Unless she's deciding to, like, move out, move out. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Hmm. Of course. Are you gonna be okay by your lonesome? No. <laughs> Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. <laughs> a dog? Right. Forget art school. I'll say for the dog. <laughs> I see. Picking favorites already. Is that what it's going to take? Medium-sized dog. handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it will cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. She knows what she wants. Well, the dog is a lot cheaper than college. Very true. Amanda laughs. Oh. Suddenly, a pile of envelopes sat through the mail slot. We just moved. Speaking of college, un unless there are acceptance letters. Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffers, shuffles. My mouth's not working today. I'm going to take a drink. Of course, I got lipstick on it. Amanda darts, darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Child, pick those up. This is uh, McGowan College Art, College of Art and Design. Open it. Mm. I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Mm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. No big deal. Trust me, kid. It doesn't matter. It's it's not gonna define your life. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. You'll have lots of chances to change if you want to. We have a letter opener, but okay. Mm. <laughs> I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth scanning the letter. Did she get in? Uh, the admission committee has reviewed your ac application, blah 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 blah. Um, we- her face drops. No! Regret to inform you they're unable to offer your admissions to McGowan? McGowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Yeah. It's okay, I kinda saw it copying. I knew I shouldn't have put that ex experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their missioned officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Hmm. I'm fine, really. She's quite... No, of course she's not. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, I'm at Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight, so you need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool. I would choose more uh, delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know I'm conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have to you'll have the new place to yourself. <coughs> yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. Uh, I, no. You gotta attend the uni meeting. I'm going clipping. Let's try it. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves, the lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, the ones all the kids see these days are doing. It's not that, but, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. Just kidding. I'm actually going to go to... 
watch the game? I mean, mm. nice. Which game? You know the game, the one that's on tonight. Aww. The game on TV, it's somewhere other than here. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Amanda Shrugs. Okay. Have fun at the gym, Benny. Amanda Shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crime by this point. Maybe some money laundering at least? I mean, yeah. She has ambition. She could do it. I'm a street rat. Pops. <laughs> hey, street. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? Mm. <laughs> yes, dad. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. Hey. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Ugh. No, making fun of sports is played out. Hey. All right then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hmm. Hey, don't forget that you'll, you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Ooh. Oh right, Mr. Vega. Oh, I get doom flashbacks. Has Bando. This is him, unfortunately, in the corner here. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. I've met, what, three? Two? No. Yeah, three, and then I saw the fourth one. Smile as often as you can, blah, 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 blah. Well, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. <laughs> so I'm going to pick a direction I'm walking out. Let's go. This way. Cool. Okay. We're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance. Could it be? <gasps> a big burned out neon sign Neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Kim? Jim and Kim's? Huh? Alright. It'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool bars sound in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hang lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice-cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy that refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. <laughs> I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team is preference. My team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. Brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with the fan of the opposing team. Several people in the bar are wearing distinct colors of the team I dislike, although I believe their demeanor that, like me, the passion for the team is all in good fun. We should hope. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. God damn it. I come here often. No, no, oh, no. I actually just moved to this part of town. I'm Lemmy, by the way. Are you watching the game? Yeah. My preferred team is, is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh, I love that team. And I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Fucking god. <laughs> I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh. Ah. Buy a gala drink? Uh, yeah. I don't think she needs a drink. Uh, maybe some other time? Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar painter to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. <sighs> After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team? It's the broody man from the coffee spoon! He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that you are winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. Oh, it's getting heavy here. I have to just disagree with that. Based upon our win slash loss record, I'd say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong. Since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. Not wrong. The conversation ends there and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple through the throughout the bar. 
I raise a respectful glass with the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truth is formed between us and based on our mutual love for the game. He, much, he motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides over to me. Slides one over to me. My name is Robert. Thanks. I'm Lemmy. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? Oh. No, that'll be Neil. <laughs> uh, Neil waves from across the bar. <laughs> Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. I like his humor. Okay. <laughs> you a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. Mm -hmm. You like shots? I love shots. Ooh. Ooh, shots fired. Love shots, thank god. Ooh, I'm already getting some hearts here. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. Shots of whiskey? Oh. Okay, here's to our your health. We take the shot. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. I feel this pain. Okay, let me. This guy's out of my friend league. But I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Okay, it said in the advice on one of the cutscenes to not ask about people's random tattoos. I'm guessing that would be kind of weird. This is a good option. I like your jacket. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from the firstborn to the firstborn cursed, some would say. What the fuck? <laughs> this man is... Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Running from my problems, trying to make friends. My daughter kicked me out of the house. Not like forever. She was having to sleep over with her friends. Uh. Family type, huh? Single dad. Uh -huh. Hmm. He's into that? Okay. He gets up. Be right back. Gotta power my powder my nose. What the actual Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha, huh, I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him, a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I must, then I really must be. I think he's just, I don't think that's how cool works, but Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Yes. Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking the same direction. <sighs> I live in the cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? <laughs> Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Hey. Great place to be. Bleh, be good neighbors. Well, son of a, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. Mm -hmm. I don't kiss and tell, Lemmy. Mm -hmm. So are we doing this or what? <gasps> Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh, 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 what? Hey. You know, do you want to come? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that wave of realization rushes over me, I blush. Let's do it. Holy shit. Did I just get laid? I follow him to the door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and then locks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Do I have to read this? <laughs> Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up to the stairs into what I assume is his bedroom, but it's so dark. Watch it, he just like kills me. This would be funny. But it's so dark that I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again. I can hear him. Shocking off his jacket, I come see him take off mine too. His home wrote down to my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. Hi, I, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? No? Good. Robert continues to unbuckle my belt. Guys, you did the bed. Let's have some fun. Oh my fucking god. Sunlight streams. His house is a fucking mess. I picked the wrong guy. My goodness. Sunlight streams in between the slats of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house or my new house. Oh, right. I look around for Robert but find myself alone. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs its keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. You should go. Oh. That's certainly not what I was expecting. Uh, talk to you later. Mm -hmm. Robert cracks a smile. Sure, your clothes are over there. Hey. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. 
I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home, but I suddenly remember Amanda. Yeah. I rush back home and throw open the door. Somebody smells delicious. Amanda? Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Aw oh, man, I was kinda hoping you had gotten kidnapped. I was gonna have some I'm gonna have uh to come rescue you. No, I uh made a friend in the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Which Where are the Emmas? Oh. They left a little while ago. Oh, you guys have fun? Yeah, watched some movies, ate snacks, stole a car, you know, the usual sleepover stuff. Girl sleepovers are just fucking wild. You teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Hmm. I'm very hungover. Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon, perfect. Can I... Ugh. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, I gotta go do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. Yeah. Oh, somebody's hungover. Father of the year. You wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or... Hey. You're the adult. I just got the thing. Hang on. Amanda runs to the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Oh, the pickle juice thing? Amanda, what? Right. Drink this. The pickle juice? Ah. Yep. It's what I used once. I uh, would assume someone would use. I, I also assume that it pre works pretty well. Mm -hmm. huh? Although I've never tried it before and won't try it, obviously. I wonder what they got up to last night. Maybe some drinking? Let's do that. I side eye her s suspiciously. I eye the jar of pickles even more suspiciously. This better work. I down a sip of the tart juice. No, no, no. More than that. Way more than that. Ah. I'm just drinking it out of the jar. I mean, I assume. Watch it, you. Drink more. Pic I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to park it take in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into runny egg yolk, that's how you do it. I'm starting to feel a little better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta get to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? Damn, I'm hungover too. He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Always do. We do our secret handshake and she's off. A little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. I totally forgot that I had that meeting. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on the way. I'm barely awake and feel pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that it's only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 102 or 108? I spot a youth standing at the locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vegas' classroom is? The youth <laughs> turns around and looks me up and down with heavy, lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid. I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy. You gonna help me or not? Sigh. Fine. Up those stairs to the left. Can't miss him. Head up to the stairs and we walk around unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. The youth punk sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to wherever that low rent Gerald Way. Gerard Way is standing fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, and then suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Mm -hmm. Lucian. Don't you have a third period to get to? Sigh. Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. Now I'm off. Officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. You're not cool. Um. You must be Lemmy. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Sure. Hugo. Oh. Mr. Vega leads in, leads me in, and I take a seat in one of the com comically small student desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Okay, but like high school desks mm -hmm. and stuff aren't even tiny in comparison to like adult, like, furniture. It's the middle school stuff you gotta be wary about. All, all right. Where were we? Now, can you tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's catching, Catcher mm -hmm. in the Rye? Ugh. Yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm? Whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. Alright, anyone else? Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Oh. 
Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narr narrator in the sense that a bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. If I was 10 minutes late, why was class- Okay, so like, I was supposed to be there 10 minutes ago, but class is still going, so it wouldn't have really mattered. But I guess you have to be there earlier for meetings. I get it. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Nobody's listening. Oh. Or not, I guess. You should say these things before the bell rings. Mr. Vega turns on me and sighs. Um. Middle schoolers, right? Are we at a middle school? I thought this was senior. Is this just like one big school? Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Hmm. Both, you know? Budget cuts. Right. Oh. Makes a lot more sense about the, the arm fart joke. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem. Mr. Vega? Hmm. Please call me Hugo. Uh. I don't normally do these things impromptu teacher parent teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda is a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. We just moved here, man. What's going on? Hmm. Amanda has never been the most engaged student. Or maybe it's the same school, but we just moved houses. But I know she cares. Recently, she's though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and had been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. Yeah, it hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Hmm. Just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved. She has a t I have noticed anything different about her, but she always tends to put on a happy face no matter what. Ah. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate her guidance. Your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road, I know how important our school is to her and I would hate to see her miss out on the scholarship money she clearly deserves. This is a lot of talking, man. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Ah. Anytime. On my way out, I stop. Thank you for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Ah. Yes? They ever catch that ride? Oh. Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of school. I'm still a little bit shocked that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force of positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Oh. Pull up the carpool and Amanda hops into the passenger yeah. seat. seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually uh, just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Hmm. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh, I mean, we just moved. Hmm. Sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't da Dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. A singular thing. Sounds like a deal to me. Also a deal to me. Take me with you. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when the kids get older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have a parent's perspective. Because, you know, some maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. God damn it. Maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that I'm- it's good to sh good to share. Love you. What a mess. Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. Surprised you even know what that is. Funny. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie. Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class, that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pop. Senior- senioritis and all that. I thought you liked make Mr. Vega's class. Oh. It's fine, he's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and catch and I I Amanda, she's still texting. Just I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Oh. Uh-huh. I can tell whatever it is she doesn't want me to know knowing about it. That's frustrating. Mm -mm. I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Way to bring that up just after she got re rejected from her school though. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Of course she is. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Ah. Uh, it's uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. 
Being a parent's rough. Who are you texting? Huh. Noah. Who's Noah? My friend. I've had this exact conversation before. <laughs> Does he go to your school? <sighs> yep. Do you like... Yeah, Noah? Hey. What? No. Dad. Ugh. I can't believe you would... Ugh. Dad. I mean, jeez. <laughs> Why would you? Ugh. Gross. Sorry. Sorry. Just asking. Dad, he's just... My friend. Guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Hmm. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. Well, good talk, love ya, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall then. This relationship, though. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of a dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. Let them just hang out, man. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Hell yeah. Language, Missy. Heck yeah. Better. We approach the food court and evaluate our evaluate our options. The greasy restaurant at the greasy restaurant, my heart burns just looking at the menus. Oh yeah. Nobody looks happy to be here. Uh, what working at a mall will do for you, do to you? Um, what are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you want me to inject some fatty direct some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. I would make that would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. Mm, I love nachos. We order a giant pile of chips and naturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and po possibly stoned teenager. It's street. <laughs> we take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. What? These are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely, strangely delicious. Hmm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent. Whatever. Cheesy goodness together until we all out of nachos. So, hmm. something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? <laughs> Sorry, which meme? All of all memes. Manda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people. They get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is, is that by the time the meme gets to you, Dad, all of us youths have already done the joke to death. So it's already over. And what's worse than that is that movies and TVs TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train, but it's just based on how long it takes to make them. The meme will be long dead by the time it comes out, so it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? <laughs> Dad, please! <laughs> anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to the goth store? Hmm. What? You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as an anti-establishment despite being an exact representation of the establishment. I I don't know what store you're talking about. Hot Topic, guys. Come on. You know, the one where you can buy chain wallets and basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movement in the 70, 70s and 80s? Yeah. Hot Topic. Gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in... That one time. Oh, that one. Anna runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is. You can still see the outline, kind of. Gross. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Speech, 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 speech. Man, all right, I'll do it if you stop chanting. Amanda stops me. Clear my throat. <clears throat> Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate this historic moment that would forever shape history. On a day very much like today, but some five years ago, five years ago, our own, our very own Amanda and Sour had too much blue raspberry slushy at an outing to the mall. Oh. After begging her father to take her to death, goth, and beyond, fuck's sake, to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over the display of My Chemical Romance merchant, merchandise. Her loving father then had to pr pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank oh. you. Amanda's move. She begins clapping. Slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping. I bow my head. Yeah. Oh, hey, chain wallets. 
They're both dramatic. While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look for in Dead Goth and Beyond. Is there going to be a goth dad in here? Or should a band teacher look at an ironic mug? Just clear bid for hot deals. Mugs. Suddenly stricken by existential fear. If, on if there's only one number one dad, then why are there many mugs here that say that? Good question. This whole time I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place in the global dad rankings chart? I have work to do. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear- I overhear a stifled argument over the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Oh my. I feel it. Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave it if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I love saying that. Well, it seem that I have outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Mr. Shapiro's will receive a strongly worded letter by post. He's such a nerd. In the funniest ways. Look at him. Date him instantly? This guy? This is this is the choice. God damn it. <laughs> Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out. His literal coattails tra trailing behind him. I can tell if they're Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Mana drops off to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh, no. Hey Datron 5000. <laughs> yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops the shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. Hmm. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard I worried she'll pull something. I'm not. No, I think just this and then I'll... I think I'm just editing tonight, actually. Um, Damien. Oh, I didn't get to read that one. That's okay. She hands Amanda her bags and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Amanda and I sit on the couch. Hi, Sham! <laughs> Amanda and I sit on the couch trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. Oh, oh cool. Long haul paranormal ice cream ghost truckers is on. What? Oh, man. Your favorite, right? Oh, hell yes. They have to make it over uh, the Canadian tundra before the ice road melt, but they're also hunting ghosts. Now, both of these are real shows, separately. The, the trucker thing is kind of crazy if you've ever seen it. I have this game, but I haven't played it yet. Looks good though. There's a lot of talking, but it, it's fun. It's a lot of funny moments. Also, the trucks are haunted. Okay. <laughs> This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flynn Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no, the ghost drone. The ghost done got control of the truck. Oh, is this the Canadian speech? The ghost done got control of the truck. I can't steer. Nope, that's not even a Canadian accent. I'm Canadian. It doesn't even work. I can't steer on them. They're damn ice roads. Let me use this EVP meter to try and communicate with the spirits. Flint, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like we're saying you're going to die. Hmm. That's because we are about to die. You, this is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go and start arguments on the internet. Ah. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploit of Callum and Flint Dogbone after the dis disastrous ice road incident. Afterwards, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. At least he's sleeping in bed this time. Not in the recliner. It's rude to ask people about their mysterious hand tattoos. That's why I got laid. It's easy, easy. Because I didn't ask him about his hand tattoo. Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never let me have five more minutes, so get up. Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spent the morning putting together furniture. Amanda is much better at uh, interpreting the tiny manuals. 
we were able to put together a few shelves and one desk, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Ah. Ikea for the win. So you're excited for the cook-up today? Oh, yeah, it's today. Excited to beef up my grilling skills. There's food, I'm excited. Uh, uh, yes, that's sure. I'm all over those terrible store-bug sugar cookies that everyone brings to parties. Mm. Yeah, those are bad. I can only eat one and then I'm just like two too much. Which means they're a mark for me. Do you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Both of these people are very anxious. Dad, you're beautiful work in progress. You will get that butterfly to emerge from that cocoon. From the cocoon, a social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. Definitely wouldn't want to be late. What? No, we have to be fashionably late. Fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? Normal people. You know what? We're going to be early just because he said that. I head over to the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the seat in Joseph's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. Huh? Ooh, look at this backyard. I love it. Guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people and the smell of hot dogs waft through the air. Small children run through the sprinkler and adults chant. Oh, I thought it said chant. No, it says chat in small clusters. <laughs> I set our veggie plate down on the table next to a, two other veggie plates, huh? Oops. Hey, there's Joseph. I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome! I'm so glad you two are here! And you brought veggies! Oh. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Hey. Hi. <laughs> this is Christian and Christy. They're twins. Hey. They stare creepily and say nothing. Then, of course, there's our youngest. What? Krish? Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in the crib. <gasps> oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Hey. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. This is the lady that hit on him in at the bar. Uh, Mary, sweetheart, did you put Krish to bed? Ah. I have to go look for him. Mm. What? You'll, you'll have to... Joseph takes a moment to regain his composure. Where's the baby, Mary? Oh. Mary, this is our new neighbor, Lemmy, and his daughter, Amanda. Mm. I'd shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Amanda, please don't. She's not a good role model. Uh, nice to meet you, Mary, for the first time. Never before seen. Charmed. Well, I have to get over there now. She's so sly. She's Mary leaves. Oh god, this is awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. Just the anxiety that radiates off this man. Jesus. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. Uh -huh. My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. All the guys, eh? Amanda, I mail around, try some food, and spread out on the table. I pick some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Uh, I don't want to have to make friends. Aww. Come on, Dad. Who are you going to party with when I'm off to school? I don't know, but I don't want to go. <laughs> but I don't want to have to do pleasantries. <laughs> small talk sucks. Dad, oh, they're going to talk about the weather. <laughs> go, do it. Make a friend. But how could I possibly abandon my only child a social function? That's bad parenting. This plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. <laughs> Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? It is. Oh dang, Robert's here. We slept with each other. <laughs> Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Yep. Isn't that guy who was throwing a fit in dead Gotham Beyond? I love that. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. <laughs> but wait a second. All these people live in our cul-de-sac? That can't be right. It's the Dilf, Dilf cul-de-sac, I have to say. I'd better investigate. Okay, sh what was his name? Robert? Oh god. I'm trying to avoid the guy that I slept with. Uh. I think his name was Robert. Let's do this one because Craig. We know Craig. Yep. 
this is a good pick. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig's looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't know if it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they're unique byproduct of the social and political climax, climate, climate of a time and place, and try to make a something like, say, the Rococo period and compare it to the postmodern modernism in America. You're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. <gasps> Matt and Hugo seem to be busy talking that they don't notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. Yeah. I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little more attentive to my existence. How was resistance training go the other day? Please don't run with the babies. Drop to your chest. Yeah. Great. Little River here is a great cheerleader. Aren't you, tiny bro? <laughs> Craig grabs the river's arms and waves them around. It's so oh. cute. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. Unfortunate. She must be a handful at that age. Oh, oh they always are. Hey. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arm again, arms again and waves them around. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's smiling at me. I'm sorry for throwing up on you too, Dad. Hmm. How are you settling in? I never get too comfortable. Oh, that sucks. This place is perfect. Almost done. There's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can really call myself settled, but I think we can upgrade the situation to livable. Oh. They're also snarky. I love it. We did livable throughout the entirety of college. <laughs> yeah, my goal was for Amanda to live in that sort of life I, that didn't involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing Whoa. as a plate a palate cleanser between different types of pizza. She still does, though. Hey, she takes after her dad. Lemmy, how are you liking the neighborhood? It's pretty nice. Everybody's been super friendly. Hey, yeah. Seems like your daughter is fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard to where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, taking weeds and waving them into little, f weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I can't, I don't recognize, jogs over to us. What is it, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. I thought you'd look cu cute in it. Hey. Well, that's the only one way to find out. Matt takes a fire crown and places it on top of his head. Yes, he does look cute. Am I cool now? Yes. The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mmm, nope. But you're still slightly le less uncool than you were before you put it on. I have to agree. Uh -oh. Huh. Hey, Lemon. L lemon. Lemmy, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmesita. Okay. Amanda comes over with Daisy in tow. I'm making friends. Woo. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Is that a threat? Yeah, actually, Amanda. And you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friends and uh, your teacher? Huh? Oh, Mr. Vega. I didn't realize we were neighbors. Yes. Yeah. That scared me a little. Yep. You <laughs> still gonna get me that over two term paper? Haha, uh -huh. <laughs> great seeing you. Also, how I would react to seeing my teacher at a back backyard barbecue. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. She learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. Oh, this is a mess, honestly. She's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where did my son go? Sweet man, Hugo, look Hugo looks around the party. He must finally spot him because his eyes go wide. What? Ernest! Ernest Hemingway Vega? He did not name his child Ernest Hemingway. Are you smoking? Oh. Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of his cigarette and flicks it into the gutter. Hmm. Unbelievable. Excuse me. Hugo marches over to Ernest and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Hey. Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler into <laughs> Joseph's pants, nearly burned half down half the yard. A sparkler. I thought it said... Okay. Sparkler. Hmm. Those things don't... You could like snuff it out pretty easy though. In the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. Oh, a little bit pyrotechnic. And then it spread into my yard and burned down half my yard, too. <sighs> oh yeah, he's a bit angsty. Um, Hugo walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hmm. I'm sorry for you, dude. Hey everybody, sorry about that, let me. This is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, his hands shoved deep in his pockets. Get that kid some milk. Ernest nudges him impatiently. Hey, nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Doesn't matter. 
Not oh, really. Ernest. Okay, okay, I'm in the 8th grade. God, are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Um... He's, what, 12? Can I go now? I'm tired of talking to old dudes that blame my generation for the failing economy. Ouch. Uh... Ernest. Oh yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts earbuds in and storms off to stand in the corner. Well, that was that was certainly something. He seems nice. Eagle puts his head in his hands and sighs. Kids, right? I'm so sorry. He's having a really tough time. Rough time. As much as I want to be a cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad. And he clearly resents me for it. Hmm. I mean, I think as a dad and as a teacher, that's about as authoritarian as you can get. Honestly, are there any cool- are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm cool as a cucumber. Someone- someone- <sighs> Okay. <laughs> See that right there? You can't say that. Oh. My kid thinks I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be cool- the cool dads? How long does that last? Oh. I, uh, I don't know. What age do they stop thinking you're cool? I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once raged against and accepted our fate of to I unironically wear socks with sandals. <laughs> Your kids may think you're cool now, but the moment they hit puberty, they're, you're doomed. Mana's 18 and she still thinks I'm cool. Hmm. I yell across the yard to my daughter, Meta, I'm cool, right? Meta just laughs, she keeps laughing. <laughs> I see your point. Um. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's as important to be a cool dad as it is to be a good dad. We can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Hmm. Our job as parents is to make sure our kids turn out okay. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, you're right. It'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. Is college when that happens? Oh. Hey. Don't let us eat up your time, Lemmy. Go get some um, of the other people around the neighborhood. I really don't want to run into Robert. Oh god. Are they going to make me talk to everyone? Can I just skip it? Oh, okay. The guy from Dead Gotham Beyond and the Grill. This is the guy that... Um... Oh, my hair. Who was it? Some One of you wanted the vampire dude. I wonder what they're talking about. I walk over to them. So I'm curious. Can you talk- walk me through why you had your house painted black? Where do I even start? The house stays warmer in the winter. It provides an artistic contrast to the rest of the neighborhood and it complements the crimson, crimson interior perfectly. You actually can't just do that. Shocker, but... Cul-de-sacs have rules. Um, it's definitely an, an interesting choice. How delightful! Thank you. Then again, actually... Maybe it's not like a enclosed place. I think people would complain to the city though. Maybe they're just all chill though. Thank you, I'm very proud of my abode. Let me. I was just having a conversation with Damien here about this. Aesthetic design decisions. Damien regards me up and down with warm but critical eye. How do you do? I don't believe we had the pleasure. I can't. I think I saw him. Saw you in Dead Goth and Beyond the other day. Damien's face turns bright red. Oh, he's shy. I must apologize for my behavior on that day. You see, I take the goth style, take the goth lifestyle very seriously, and to be caught in a ruse by such a corporation as Dead Goth and Beyond was profoundly frustrating indeed. Vampire one, oh yeah, a hundred percent. I hope you know that while my anger have been just may have been justified, I have no way for a gentleman to act. Oh, someone drowned me. It's okay, man. Hmm. Don't tell me about yourself. Are you new to the area? Yes, my daughter and I just moved in the other day. She was the one I look. I took to dead goth and beyond. <laughs> Very good taste on her part. Does she partake in the goth lifestyle? <laughs> I think for a second I look over to Amanda, who's hanging out with some of the older kids in the neighborhood. Oh hey Amanda, would you consider yourself a goth? Amanda yells back. I wouldn't necessarily try to fall under any sp one specific label, but I guess if I had to choose, I would more describe myself as tw twee hipster with some not norm core leanings. I love that. Bats are cool though. Hmm. Ah, pity. Uh. Are you enjoying the party so far? Oh, definitely. Thanks so much for putting this on. It's nice to be in a cul-de-sac where everyone is so friendly and welcoming. 
Amanda walks up to the conversation. When do I get a flirt with dads, though? I also like The Lost Boys a lot. A really good movie. Does that count as goth? That I would, my dear. I don't believe we have the pleasure of meeting. Dam Damien Blood March, at your service. Damien finishes the sentence with a flourish and bow, producing a single rose and offering it to Amanda. Amanda blushes and returns the gesture with a curtsy. Ah. Why do you know how to treat a lady? <laughs> Hello, Amanda. There's the twins, the creepy little twins. Seemingly out of nowhere, Joseph's, Joseph's twin kids appear. Uh, are they speaking in unison? Ah. Hi. Hey. Won't you come play with us? Hmm. That's creepy. Okay. Uh, come play with us forever. Oh. <laughs> Guys, enough with the creepy twin shtick. We've talked oh. about this. <laughs> Christian and Christy slowly back away. I mean, if I had a twin, I would totally do that. Where do you think they got that from? Uh, Mary pops into the conversation, wine in hand. It's her. It's her. She's uh, insane. Uh, I don't know. Mary takes a long sip of wine. Mm -hmm. I think I might have taped over Ve Veggie Tales VHS with a shiny. Who knows? <laughs> Where's Chris? Uh, Wasn't he with you? That's the the youngest child that you have lost, Mary. Uh, you had him a moment ago. Uh, Oh god, I'm watching this marriage fall apart. He's still probably st stuffing dirt in his mouth. He'll be alright. Toddlers are pretty resilient. Mary tips her glass to me. Huh? Ain't my first time at to the rodeo. What the fuck is that? It's my fourth. Ugh. I have squeezed four little... Oh. Okay, okay. Sweetheart, would you do me the fe favor and please find Krish? That would be great. Oh. I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> Mary, just find your toddler. My god. Ah. Okay, jeez. Mary finishes her wine and wanders off. Dad, can we go now? <gasps> hmm. Lucian! I introduced you to Lemmy yet? Hey, it's that punk from Amanda's school. The guy that didn't give me directions. I remember you. Whatever. Huh. That's no way for a young man to speak to his elders. Be polite. Lucian bows. Oh god. Whatever, <laughs> sir. Lucian bows again. Mr. Christiansen. Mr. Christiansen? May I have a veggie burger, sir? Coming right up, bud. Are you vegetarian? Yep. Make that two veggie burgers. Did you know that some people in the Victorian era were vegetarians? They described carnivore-type people as blood lappers? Like, lapping up blood, I get it. Kind of. That's really interesting, Damien. I bet like, lots of people were probably vegetarians in history, you know? Joseph turns to the girl, just a hint of tattoo peeks out. Underneath his sleeve? I can't believe I didn't notice it before. It looks like the bottom of an anchor. Whoa, is that a tattoo? Nice. Yep, I wasn't always a youth pastor, you know. That's cool. Want to see mine? Oh, Lucian? My. What? Lucian pulls back some rubber bracelets, for re re revealing a lopsided 666 in black ink. Did he, did he do it himself? He totally has it on his hand right here. Look at this. My buddy gave me a stick and poke tattoo last week. I think it's healing up pretty good. Dude, that's so bad. You can get infected so badly if you don't pay attention. Lucian, we'll talk about this later. Also hurts a lot. That's pretty cool. What's the significance of the tattoo? I don't know. I just thought it looked sick. Do you not know the significance? Hmm. Well, in my opinion, the only reason you need to get a tattoo is because you want one. Careful though, that number carries weight. Man, Joseph is way cooler youth pastor than I thought. Just figured youth pastors popped out of the womb with a Bible. I wonder if he did before preaching. Watch him be a rebel. I really don't want to talk to Robert. Should we though? Like I slept with him. Oh, burger time is gonna be eventual time. So let's 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 get. Let's, oh God. Over to Robert and Brian who are chatting over drinks, determined not to be weird about what happened that night. I hope Robert feels the same. Hey guys, let me. How's the how the heck are ya? Settling into the neighborhood, all right? Oh yeah, betcha. Got the living room in order at least. That's great to hear. I've been doing some living room work as well. Finally got the 50 inch in there. The game looks great and high def. He's the guy to go to if you want to watch the Super Bowl next year. Oh boy, let me. Have you met Robert yet? Unfortunately, yes. I believe we met briefly in the bedroom. Uh, mm. hey. Robert takes a long sip of- Dude, it's like middle day. Robert, Rob 
despotically extends a hand. I shake it as he stares unblinkingly into my eyes. Oh god, what does that mean? How's it going? Uh. It's good. Of the awkward small talk. Robert focuses on the whiskey he's holding, taking a long sip. Uh. Great. Look at my friends becoming friends. Us dads gotta stick together, you know? See a dad? Dads? Robert had a kid? Oh, I didn't know you had kids. Oh. Robert continues to stare at me. Jesus, does this guy ever blink? <laughs> I just saw him blink. <laughs> um, yep. Cool. 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 Not awkward at all. Cool. Oh, he says, okay. <laughs> uh. Say the same thing. We stand in incredibly uncomfortable silence for several minutes into moments until... We gotta get this... Get off this haunted truck. Oh no. The ghost locked the doors. Uh. Oh, they're talking about... Daisy and Amanda run up to us. Thank God. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape button. Uh, then hit the brake, I guess. And then we'll get out of the truck. Imaginary truck. Anyway, we're safe from the ghosts. But how will we ever survive the Arctic tundra? Daisy, Arctic. <laughs> Daisy, you must have to eat me. <laughs> Are you prepared to do that? I am prepared to do anything to survive. Damn, she's ruthless. Huh. Go, Daisy. That's cold-blooded. I like that. Me too. I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. Uh. Well, you have ice. You could freeze the pieces. Wait a second. Are you guys playing long haul ice road paranormal ghost truckers? I love that. Amanda and I like, love that show. <laughs> it's the best. Especially that episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an accident. Curse herb and sending the spirit after him? Such a quality reality television. <laughs> Alright, Daisy, I found us a couple bugs. We're gonna make a great meal. Lots of protein. Gonna keep us from starving out here in the harsh, icy wasteland. There's a whole table of food right over the Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Don't eat the bugs, though. Okay. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy worms from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find Kinley for the fire. <laughs> Okay, Robert just backs the fuck out of there, but not actual fire, because we're playing pretend. Now you're getting it. Amanda and Daisy, or Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. Turn my attention back to the conversation, but wait, where did Robert go? I skim the party and finally find him in the corner talking to Mary. Does, does he not want to, not want to talk? Man, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I hope they become friends. It's not out of Robert's induced, out of my Robert induced haze. I guess Amanda just sort of has his way with kids. Cool. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. I'm gonna have a drink. Oh, but I didn't get any lipstick on. It's kind of amazing. Oh, I said that already. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teachers say she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. I think she's just socially awkward, Brian. There it is. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age too. She used to have a lot of habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. Okay. She... She bit people too. Oh ho ho. Kids, right? Yes, Santa. You gotta love them. You're required by the law. <laughs> required to by the law. Well, since they're getting along men, well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, like, Amanda's literally 18. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellows. I think I've met everyone. Without further ado, let's work some magic. Get me the burgers. Joseph closes his eyes, take a deep breath, and gets to work with the great, greatest of ease. He sets patties on the grill. Flourishing as he flips the spatula in the air. It's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. This man is in love with a grill. You guys think this is my first time in front of a grill? No, you have these parties often, right? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese into patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dad, the dads take notice in the crowd around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. Probably didn't know this, Lemmy, but Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. Uh. He's ungrillable. Grill. Nope, I'm not even gonna try to say that. I tried to get on his level, but I can't. Oh. 
Let us keep studying. No. You know what I always say is like, let us go. Let us leave. Let us leave. Because it's like, let us leave. Let us leave. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality. God. Rare. Rare quality about him. Mustard. We keep talking about this. Can I preach an artist? No, not you too, Robert. I've never seen him made a mistake. Mm. Okay, we need to stop this. This is getting too cheesy. Uh please stop. All these children at the party too. At the party boo. The glorious display of puns in unison. <laughs> Alright guys, the food's ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. Oh, Matty Groves. We all grab our food and hang out. Enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. This is painful. And it's so wild to have all of us dead lived in the same cul-de-sac. Yeah, it's the Delft sack. Nope. Nope. I didn't say that. <laughs> hey. <laughs> kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's a real community here. Totally helps us when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. Hmm. We're happy to hear have you here, man. I think you're gonna like this neighborhood a lot. Hmm? Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all of the kids. And she decides to get into the babysitting game, she'll really make a killing. Yeah. True. Why don't you add us all on dad book? Dad book. Oh. Is it like Tinder for dad? It's a great social network for dad to keep in touch with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media... Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops, I'll help you figure it out. Also, show me how to use the GPS, please, lady. Or, I mean, daughter. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly. We all trade stories and drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmesita and the weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. And now I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Oh, I wish I could. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to play. You and Daisy seemed like you were having a way better time than I was. Because we were. Mm. Fair. Well, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on dad book. Maybe I will. If I ever figure out how social media works. You can get there, Lemmy. Don't worry. I have a good feeling about this place. You literally got laid the first night you moved here, so... I mean, me too. Keep your word. Yeah. Okay. Good advice. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Hmm. Seems like nobody was really into the cauliflower. I like cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Huh. Actually, yeah, I'm going out with some friends. Oh? Hmm? Is that okay? Of course. Just keep me posted and be home before midnight. Hmm. You got it. And be careful. Okay. I will. Make good choices. Oh. Of course. And call me if you need anything. Oh. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No, I never do that and I never will do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh... My plans are kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm gonna... Uh... Ooh, work on some stuff. Well, you know, dad stuff. I'm just relaxing tonight, having fun, okay? okay? Great, see you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. She has her own car, sweet. Or maybe she's borrowing, I don't know. I really do hope she has fun. Plop down in front of the TV and turn on some Winnie Wine and Dine Mastermind. I bet Mary enjoys that one. With celebrity chef Gavin Chapman. <sighs> Looks like Gavin's making a roast rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. Mm. I'd love to be able to cook like that, although I think if I was actually good at cooking, I would use my powers for evil. Just like making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food with real nutritional substance. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. Oh my god. At least track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind. And I also want an episode of some cooking show called Meat Hell. Oh, it's like Gordon Ramsay's show. Um, Hell Kitchen, but it's Meat Hell. Um, I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. Yep. There we go. Inspiration. You want some of my watch, man? It's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I sent a text. Hey kiddo, you good? Oh no, something's gonna happen. I'm wandering to the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand. 
So I'm sure she'll respond soon, unless she's driving home now, in which case I hope she doesn't respond soon, because I definitely taught her better than to drive and text. Reaching Tyler in the freezing, grab an ice cream sandwich. A little late for this, but I think I learned, earned it after a long day of socializing. I feel ya. Check my watch again, and then my phone. Nothing yet. Oh no! Did she run away? No, she wouldn't have. Did we call her? Do we call the cop? No, no, it's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passed. Now I'm really worried. The episode of Gavin's Chapman, Meat Hill, are not, are not only not assuring my, the, the, my anxiety, but possibly ex exaber exasperating. Ask. Nope. Not even gonna try. I know what the word is, I just. My mouth isn't working well today. Um, with all the yelling, so I keep pacing around my house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who she was even with? Why don't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I even know any of her friends' full names? Those are like basics that you should know. Who is Emma Pete? You've known them for years, please. I decide to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. Can't help but think all the awful things that could have happened to her. God, what? Thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally, finally she's back home. I'm glad she's okay. Sup? Sweetie, thank God you're safe. Ugh. Ugh, yeah. But now I know she's okay. I'm really mad. Why didn't you answer my text? We're just gonna watch her get in trouble. Amanda pulls out her phone out of her pocket. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoops. Guess I didn't see those. Walk to her room. I'm trying to get away with it. Amanda Ann. Hmm. Whoa. I'm pulling out the middle name now. Amanda, you came home an hour and a half after your cur curfew and didn't respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Hmm. Oh, Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go to school, are you? This is her rebelling. I have a right to be concerned. Don't like her attitude, though. I was scared. Oh. Yeah. You weren't responding and it was just... It was just... No! Dude, this is guilt tripping now. I just like when your mom... I have to stop myself from tearing up. Oh. Dad. I didn't mean to. I sit down on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. Oh yeah, she got in a car accident? Was it? No, that was just at the... That's something else. You really scared me. Just please don't do that again. Uh. Alright. I'm gonna go to bed now. Anna closes the door to her room and I head over to mine. Oh, I should do some dishes. I have a cup in there. Jeez. So I'm falling to sleep. One thing she said keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? I'm going to be all alone. I definitely didn't sleep well last night. I brewed some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. So long. Hi. Uh, thought about what you said last night. Hmm. I should have texted you. I was gonna do it and I didn't. Honestly, didn't even think about it. Uh, but you did just say you thought about it. I know. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. At least she thought about it and came back to apologize. Well. Uh. trust you to make good choices. I also thought about it and I'll try to give you space from here on out but I trust that you can take care of yourself. But she should be home when curfew is done. Team Sour? Team Sour. M Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them. Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfs down the eggs in time it takes me to wash the pan. Alright, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. Aww. What? What's dad book? Oh, Facebook. Ugh. I get it. Social media platform. Wait. Hmm. What? What's the social media platform? Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put it together. A dad book profile on my own. Hmm. Alright. I'll help you sound sound interesting on the internet. Dad? Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book. Which, as it turns out, is a place where dads get together and talk about fatherhood. Aww. Woo! <laughs> Alright, pops. I'm gonna fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Ooh, now it's the time that I get to finally interact with stuff. Oh. Oh, 
my coin collection. No thanks. Sleep following. Maybe I torment my children with death and definitely sing it to the blissful location to sleep. <sighs> he does like grilling. And he already got laid. So if you had one thing to take with you into a desert island, what would it be? Lost shaker of salt? Castaway on DVD? No. Boat, obviously. I don't need anything. My service has trained train me for this day. What are your turn-ons? Oh god. Um, strong dad arms. Tennis shoes with long white socks. Well manicured lawn. Street smarts. Street smarts. Oh, it was a meme for a meme for a while, wasn't it? Um <laughs> street smarts. Um top tier grillmanship. Comfortable with crying. Hey, it's me, hey street. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> it was also a meme for a while. I can't remember what it was from though. Not just smart. Also street. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Um, manuals and instructions. Salty boat boat. A salty boat captain though. Pro skater is also an astronaut. A good father. Aw. President of space. President of space. <laughs> What's your favorite movie genre? Sean Connery and Tyree. Entire filmography. Anything on Laserdisc. Whatever will make me cry. Old comedies I haven't horror top tier. Is there a horror section? Oh. It doesn't even give me that option, sad. Oh, whatever will make me cry. Maybe he'll cry in fear. That's uh that's fine, yeah. What's your ideal date? Now this is looking more like a dating site than it is fatherhood, isn't it? What's your ideal date? Napping together. That's something he already did. Doing a thousand piece puzzle together. Eating healthy dinner at 4pm. That's early. He going to geocatch but getting hopelessly lost. Arson. Being emotionally vulnerable. Sugar daddy sim. Basically. Pretty much. I'm gonna do this because it sounds funny. Why do you never leave home without a uh, sick vape. <laughs> a sick vape. My book of word jumbles and a pen. A cool knife. Cool knife. I'm crippling and low in self esteem. Frequently forget my phone keys and wallet at home sometimes. Cool knife. <laughs> it's an easy pick. Spent a lot of time thinking about conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theories. How proud I am of my child. The potential ends of the world. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my girl. God damn it. <laughs> When I can get a next cup of coffee, lawn more modifications. Oh. I think he's I think he's ah. contemplative. See, that wasn't so bad. That was actually kinda of fun. I totally spent a day on here. Uh just looking at people's profiles. You should message one of them or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay. I promise I'll make some friends. He doesn't know it's a dating site. Or maybe it really isn't. Maybe it's just all these questions are really weird. Go get him, dad. <laughs> she totally knows, though. What do you do? You dad book. Dads. This guy. Oh, I'm in dad book. No way. Oh. I can't stand that Matt's name only has one T, to be honest. So. And Hugo has really angsty children. And Brian, they had a fun interaction. Craig, though, is an old friend. I'm a sucker for those, um, you know, friendship turn lover things. Uh, Joseph, his, his, he's married. His marriage is falling apart, but, you know, and Damien. He's so dramatic. Hey, Bakes! How are you guys doing? Or how are you doing? How's Street doing? How's Dragon doing? Just hope everybody having a good day. So far, good Valentine's Day. Or if it's not a good Valentine's Day, a good Monday. That works as well. I'm good, how are you? I'm great. I'm having fun. Doing uh, Dream Daddy, which I also forgot to switch over in my categories because I do that every, every time. That's okay. <laughs> I'll get there. Okay, just lurking and smoking alone on this fine Monday. That is also okay. We're all happy to be here. Oh, but... Oh... 
I, uh, let's, I just wanted to see what he wrote down. Oh god. Oh no, I have so many options. Oh, internet came since, uh, he's really angsty. What are you turning on? Don't talk to me. You had something to take a gun? Okay, I slept with the wrong guy. Gave Remy at least four dives. Okay. 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 Cardio session in? He, yeah, he's beer ponged world champion. Buddy cop. Uh, just. Oh, can I message him? I'll message him. I at least get something moving. 69. It's okay to cry if you're feeling sad. But yeah, no, I'm having fun with this. There's a lot of talking in it, but I mean, it's a dating sim. I wonder what Craig's up to today. Navigate Craig's dad book page and type out a message. Oh, okay. I don't have to type it. Should say neighbor, let's catch up. Like old times. A couple of moments passed before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, my man. Definitely hang out soon. Maybe a little different from our old weekend long vendors, but it'll still be fun. <laughs> Maybe stream overlearn. Think you'd like it? Oh. Yeah, no, just the name sounds interesting already. Needy Streamer Overlord. Load? Overload. Overlord would also be funny, but... I think for a moment, this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new environment. You exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk up to Amanda's room and knock on the door. Didn't she go to school? No, Amanda Panda. Open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by magazines and news clips. She looks like she's been crying. She seems to be making some sort of art piece, but or maybe she's just tired. Her eyes are a little puffy. Almost a got it. Nailed it. Hey, are you all right? Oh yeah, I'm fine. Huh. Just got sad because I realized that dogs are too often killed, often in movies, to look emotional reactions from the audience instead of just being given to the respect that they deserve. Huh. It's not right. I don't know what's actually wrong. Are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you. I'll always be here for you. Whatever you need a shoulder to cry on, or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Oh. Aw. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. I like that, Popsicle. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced. But I'll stop badgering at her. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready, but she never does, so much you're working on. Huh. Just a collage for class. Liking the vibes, my style of decor. Yes, I love it too. Like the lava lamp. The fairy lights. I have fairy lights in my room. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. Take a closer look at her collage. That's a lot of dogs. Yeah. Dog collage? Mostly dogs, yeah. <laughs> Do you need something? Ooh. Fairy likes for the win. Craig invited us to a softball game. Wanna go? Oh no. Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and you brought me the gear and then you took me to the first game and then someone hit a ball towards me and I ran off on the field crying? Then you could in the half dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up? Yes. Uh. <laughs> I was afraid, afraid of baseballs. I thought you were a giant. Gin genetic. That's weird to think. I guess she was just so invested in that fear. Does that mean you don't want to go? Also, the fact that her computer is sitting on books, I'm going to scream. Or is it like a table thing? I don't know. Manny gets up and looks me dead in the eye, determined. Ugh. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. Let's do this. To the softball game. Then I make a short drive out of the local softball field for a kid's softball game. It's pretty packed. We clamber up the bleachers and take our seats on the top row. I don't see Craig anywhere. Right! Aww. Craig has other kids! Right? Doesn't he? I wonder the kids are crying and running off the field. <laughs> uh, I'd also be looking for them. You know what? Your relationship with softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kids cry, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. It's my girl. For nostalgia purposes, of course. Not because I take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. Mm -hmm. Definitely not that. 
The game starts and the kids run out into the field. I see Craig by the dugout with a clipboard. He has river structures just constantly with a baby on his chest. <laughs> As per usual, there's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess it's a mascot. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a sadist. Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that the Maple Bay flapjacks. That makes sense with the pancake thing. And it's the Pinewood Ocelots. Go flapjacks? I don't know. But I mean, it's pretty dramatic if you've ever seen kids playing softball. Or like any sport that just has a big outbreak of emotion. It's pretty funny. Choke up on the bat, Miranda. Yeah, Miranda, square up. Fight the ball. <laughs> How much do you know about softball? <laughs> Enough to know that balls are totally hard despite their name. Huh? But yelling is fun. Give it a shot. It's cathartic. Keep your own amount. What's more? That you're having fun. Are you willing to sacrifice to <laughs> that one? Leave it all it all out on the field, Brander. If you want this, you're gonna have to bleed for it. God damn. Why well, seem to be Amanda's father gives me a dirty look. I shoot it back at him? This attitude isn't gonna bring Miranda to D1. <sighs> Dad, please don't fight any of the other dads while we're out here. We are both equally embarrassing, I have to think. We watch a couple of the innings of softball. They aren't ready for the major leagues yet, but Craig trained them, trained his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Keg San Craig is good with children. Whoa. <laughs> It's amazing how hard they're hitting the ball and no and how no one has run off the field crying yet. I mean <laughs> I agree. Imagine dear, you have to let it go. Mm -hmm. Let what go? I'm perfectly fine. Opposing team is up to bat, they hit the fly ball to the center field. The tiny little girl tries to get under the ball, but it misses in her glove and it hits her straight in the forehead. Whoa. See? It's a con okay. Can we just remember that softball there's baseballs? Softballs are like bigger. A little bit bigger and they're softer. But they're still like gonna hop a punch to them right it's completely unjustifiable fear and she's like see girl plops down on the grass and starts crying craigs makes a beeline to her checking her forehead and humping her the uh, can't speak until her parents arrive carries her off the field as she sobs oh man it's strange to think about how this was the guy who once backlift off the roof and he took a pool while shotgunning a beer well i mean that's college for you he's so responsible now Game resumes after the girl. I don't recommend drinking and swimming though. Girl comes down a bit and we watch a couple more innings. Craig's team is crushing the other team in the ninth inning. The ocelots seem to have given up by this point. I see the outer field eating fistfuls of grass. Can you still F somebody up with a softball? Oh yeah. Easily. And it's just these kids are wailing on it, so. A batter on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory. Oh no, it's coming right for me. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. I close my eyes and brace for impact. Just move. I open my eyes and look to see Amanda. She is a, she is a star. <laughs> Staring at it in amazement. I, I caught the ball. You saved me. Hmm. Now I owe you my life. Because I gave you life. Now this is the other way. Got the ball. I did it, Amanda. Face my fears. I defeated the softball. I can do anything. They're so dramatic. They're so similar. Oh my god. Amanda and I share a big hug. It's a tender moment that I don't think anyone else really understood. You know what? Her hand must really hurt, though. I'm proud of you, kiddo. The game ends and Craig's team are declared the victors. We sit patiently as the girls line up and shake hands. Great job, everyone. We walk over to the dugout to kind of congratulate Craig, who's talking with some of the parents. Craig, great work, man. Man, it's so long. This game is so long. I've been working hard all season, and it's great to see it playing off, so I'm so proud of my girl. Speaking of which, have you met Briar and Hazel? I'm guessing those are his twins. There we are. Um, and your mom is Smashly. Oh my god. Hello. Hey, killer playing out there. Yeah, you guys rule. Thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which one of you is the evil one? Hazel. Not even denying it. Yeah, it's me. Huh? Looking good out there. Eh? 
You guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, it'd be doing that constantly. Yeah, I take all of our math tests. I usually throw rocks at stuff when people get mad. I tell them I'm Briar. Briar? Briar. What? Mm -hmm. Well, I will talk about this later. I think the baby's like chill. It's just like. Let me, bro. I got a couple more things to clean up. Then we can hang. Sounds good. Also, he's constantly in gray sweatpants, so. One of my mom jumps into the conversation. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our ring, Craig. I'm talking. I'm taking the whole team out to get pizza. Hi. Oh, I don't know if I can. Nonsense. These girls won. What sort of celebration would could we have without our fearless leader? She lays her hand on her shoulder and gives them goo eyes. Man, this mom is laying it on thick. Man, and I share a look. Mm. All right, all right. If, is it cool if my bro comes along? Mom looks slightly put out, but covers it up with a smile. Of course. Janet's just hitting hard. Hmm. She's shooting her shot, but it's not its not delivering. What? Ah. What? <laughs> it's a real place. Now, getting some pizza with the team. Then a stream of girls clad in softball gear pile out of the minivan and into a local pizza buffet, which is actually called Thirsty's Pizza. Thirsty's Pizza. Thirsty? Thirsty's Pizza. Amanda and I trail behind them with Craig. Reminds me of all the awful pizza we get we put into our bodies back in the day. Remember how we used to just fold whole pies in half and then put taco fillings inside? Does it? Do you guys have crane games in the back street? And arcade things? Ah. P pizza co's? Pizza co's? Like taco pizzas? I could never forget. How did we survive college? Our bodies were younger back then, more elastic, <laughs> more able to handle the toxic waste we put inside of us. The good old days. A little bit, yeah, food table at a different spot, but almost the same. That's so weird. That's really weird. But I guess it's like, there must be a formula to like certain layouts for stores and stuff. It, it would make sense why there's things that look similar. Kids run around playing arcade games and eating grassy, greasy food. Amanda and I jump on a couple slices of mediocre pizza. Oh. Hey, give me the pizza. Give me a pizza that. Ah. No, absolutely not. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad over here. Craig, damn. But that's weird. <laughs> Thanks for uh, addressing the issue, Amanda. Dad. Different mom walks up to us, talking to Craig as if we weren't even there. Damn, Craig's just attracting everyone he's a catch thank you so much for looking after our kids my daughter tells me every day about how great you are mm. well, I'm happy to look after them definitely helps that I have kids of my own it's been so hard since Daniel left Martha I'm glad to know my children have a strong male role model in their lives oh Martha men and I look at each other Craig gets it from all angles huh he does. He's hounded by these softball moms. Craig smiles sleepishly. Thank you so much, dude. I can't handle the fact that he calls everyone dude, though. Said my husband. <laughs> That's how it always starts. Yeah. They're all hunting. They're thirsty. Craig holds his fist up for a fist bump from the mom in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks super uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. Yeah. Tag team. <laughs> Smokescreen Martha. Oh. Mm, we could probably pull something off. Give Amanda another low and look and she hits me back with a nod. She understands. That's my girl. Amanda puts her hands on her stomach and looks at me with puppy dog eyes. <sighs> Dad, I don't feel so good. I think I ate too much pizza. Oh, oh no, sweetie. You were going to projectile vomit anywhere, are you? <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm going to projectile vomit everywhere right now. The word projectile vomit and right now usually seems to get everyone to clear up, but Martha's not budging. <laughs> Back it up, Martha, you're in the splash zone. I drank a lot of orange juice this morning and it feels pretty acidic. Oh, I love her. He'll be fine. Amanda shoots me a worried look. This calm is going sideways. I should have known that a mom of all people would know the fake puke scam. Uh, well, I guess it went away. I'm fine now. Nothing's wrong. She turns back to back on me to talk to Craig. Stop ignoring me. I'm 
taking Hazel and Briar tonight for the sleepover. Yep, they're pretty excited about it. You keep them out of trouble, right? I mean, are all these moms single? Oh, of course. I, uh, but it's just Janet and Martha so far. But of course. Um, but I could always use some help watching at, after everyone tonight if you're not doing anything. <sighs> wow, this lady is really going for the gold. Ha. It'll actually be nice to have a night to myself in River, but thanks for the invite. Way to swerve it. Uh, Martha, you might want to grab a child. She's stuffing pizza into her, to a coin slot. Martha angrily turns her attention towards her daughter. Tiffany, you're not another arcade machine, I swear. If we have to buy it. Martha turns off towards her kid? Damn. Okay. She seems nice. Oh. Yeah, that team is one big weird family. It takes all sorts, right? Tiffany, don't eat the tokens. <laughs> oh. Tiffany's a stellar hitter. Phew, I finally think I have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you're a busy guy, huh? Hmm. On days like today, I hope so. Dad. Hmm. Hey, girls. Dad, can you help us beat our record at DDR? You told Ariana's dad that you could destroy him on the dance mat. Please help. Hi. Girls, you know I don't have my jukes anymore. And he also has a baby strapped to his chest. The baby looks tired, though. Dad. Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. Hi. Oh. Sorry dudes, duty calls. I promise we'll catch up in a bit. It's all good, buddy. Dang. Craig runs off with his daughters and I'm left alone with mine. And I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today, but it seems like he's getting dragged in every direction. It definitely wasn't like this in college. Did just all the husbands die or leave their wives at the same time? I'm guessing, like, it's the cul-de-sac is full with dilfs and the one guy that is married is like has a crumbling marriage so is it just all single single people everywhere i mean i don't know what the divorce rates are but i feel like we might be a third wheel here huh? here there's worse places than an arcade to be left on to your own devices that's very true you're right want to drop some coin in a pinball i know it Pretty hot and get to work. I'm a little rusty. The pinball wizard within me will never die. I'll pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top mine. That's a good idea. And immediately she gets multi balled. <sighs> Looks like she takes after her father. You're pretty good. Aww. Matronize me. Hey, just trying to play a comp. Amanda shushes me. She's in her zen zone. She fights. Okay, ragging up one million. See this go beating my score. They're playing a game, just like we're playing a game. You're friends with Craig, right? Does she know that I'm trying to hit on people? Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Oh uh, yeah, we went to college together. Aww. Please don't lean on my thing. Nice, Amanda. Tell her off. That's so interesting. Do you know if he's, like, available? Well, I honestly don't know if I could say mm. to if they're gonna make me tilt. Oh, my Lemmy has a face. <laughs> I like to punch, I know. <laughs> it's just the options were kind of weird anyway, so I just went with it. So it's, it's just, it seems like so much work to watch after his kids. Don't you think it would be great if he... Lady, I swear to God. All of a sudden, a buzzer sound and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine tilt. And a you stone harpy. Huh? What? I said, I have to go over there and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything that will hurt your feelings. Amanda. Bro. Bro. What's going on? Oh. Now's our chance. If we don't get out of here now, we're stuck for the rest of the night. Go, Craig, go. Run on Amanda. Say good goodbyes with Craig. We head out to Peach Place, finally. Amanda promises that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. Just me and Craig. And River, the baby. Hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bro. This baby is just vibing. Like, no nap times, no crying. Just vibing this whole time. It's like, I am part dad. Part of dad. Super chill, baby. Super chill. Not at all, dude. It's good to finally get you all to myself for a second. <laughs> River burps. Okay. <laughs> well, almost all to myself. Hold up. Craig walks over to the trunk of his car and pulls out two gloves and a softball. With a baby strapped to your chest? 
No, this might be less catch and more you throw the ball at me and me running after it, but sure. Chat move. <laughs> That's how he got Janet and Martha after him, right? Also, he shouldn't have been in the dugout with a baby strapped to his chest, too. We stand in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. Mm -hmm. Oh, my throat. He has a cooler, but they only have juice boxes. Man, Father Hatch is strange. You're telling me, I can't believe it. I mean, he's probably the chattiest Chad out of all the dads. You think? I think that. Maybe. Like, he used to be like a total partier, and now he's just like all about being fit and healthy. Maybe not. Probably, though. You're telling me I can't believe I looked back on my kickstand Craig days and reminiscing- Oh yeah, no. He definitely was the chattiest Chad. I don't know if he still is. And reminiscing about it. Dad- Dad life changed him. Those were some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal kickstand. Mm. It was a feat of discipline, bro. Trust me. Horizontal? Oh, the- the- you, you hold on and you like- Extend your legs out sideways. I, trust me. Oh, there's a clicking noise. I haven't properly hung out with Craig in so long, I don't even know where to begin. Oh, I'm so tired of talking. Mm. Nice out here, quiet. Must be good to get away from the softball, softball moms for a bit, huh? Oh, no. Christ, Janet. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that was a lot. Are they always like that? Mm -hmm. Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. Yikes. Uh, I'm just so not interested. Well, what are you interested in? Oh, Lemmy. Oh, no. You also look... Oh, this looks so weird. Mm -hmm. Peace and quiet. That's hot. Hot silence. <laughs> that hot, hot silence. Hey. My ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping in on Saturday. <laughs> I feel oh, it. No. But more seriously, I just can't get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. Let me know. Oh. Hot, hot silence, eh? I'm feeling so uncomfortable trying to int introduce a stranger into my girl's life. They've already been through so much. I can't put them through that. Especially after Smashly left. Buddy, I hear you. Oh. So the moms can hit on me all they want, but the girls are my top priority. What a good dad. Doing a great job. The right person will come along eventually. It's softballs, don't get hit on by moms. Mmm. <laughs> Those kids love you. Yeah, I got some hearts. Not to that whole team loves you. I think you got this dad thing down right. Oh. Thanks, bro. Oh. That means a lot coming from you. Well, I'm distracted. I missed the softball and. Ooh! <laughs> God damn it. Hits me right in the head. Again. That hurts. My head's just a softball magnet. Amanda was right all along. Sorry, dude. Ray runs over to me. Are you okay? He leans down to get, pick me up and the baby hangs there and also reaches up. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. <laughs> Craig spends a moment examining my head. Huh. It's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. Bro. You would be so lucky. Oh, they're flirting. <laughs> I mean... I mean... I feel like I've earned it at this point. Waited all day to hang out with you. Oh, sly. Well, Craig leans in and kisses my forehead. Wait, were there eggplants in that? I, I wasn't looking. <laughs> Walk it off, champ. Are the lights on the softball feel really hot or is that just me? I get up and dust myself off. River yawns. Hmm. Baby's tired. Hey, little buddy. Must be getting tired. You know baby's supposed to have a nap time, Craig. <laughs> Baby looks so done. Baby's done. Hey little buddy, you must get tired now. I hate to say it, but I should probably head out. Sorry, things are so... You get older and life just kind of gets in the way, huh? Start walking back to the parking lot. Hey, remember that one house party we went to that got broken up by a helicopter? How can I forget? It got me hopped over a concrete wall to get away. But the other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops were parked. Oh, bad luck. Man, yeah, could you imagine the look on our faces? We just walked straight past them. Right, out for a stroll. Yeah, not knowing they were, we were at the party, they started joking with us about how big of a bust it was. I had to talk with them for like 30 minutes. You tell them you were interested in joining the academy? 
And then he started giving me pointers for the exam. Longest 30 minutes of my life. Man, college. They totally knew you were part of that party. They, t they just vibed with it. We get back to our cars. Craig pulls me into a hug. Or at least as much as we can manage with a baby between us. Never enough time, huh? <sighs> Guess not. Let me make it up to you. Let's hang out soon, yeah? I like that. Yawn as I walk through the door, smiling. Amanda hunched over her college glues. Collage glue stuck in her hand. Burning the midnight art oil. Figured I might as well do something productive between episodes of Shark Hunter and lip sync sync battles. Whoa, okay. Oh, what time is it? It might be time. Just because I'm getting kind of burned out. But I think tomorrow I'll keep playing this a little bit too. I'm going to have a lobby sometime this week. I haven't finalized on a date yet, but there is going to happen another phas uh, phasmophobia one. So I'll have to go see that when that comes. Is it saving? It's saving. Okay, sweet. But for now, oh, thanks for showing up, you guys. It was fun. It was a good Valentine's Day um, came to play. I'm happy with what I did. I'm happy with the amount of time it took. And there were some surprising things that also happened. But I never you never know what's going to pop up in a game like this. So, But thank you again for coming, for watching, and sticking around. Really appreciate it. All my VODs are uploaded on YouTube just because... I always have to keep, I uh, want to keep them around and update on Twitter. That's where I updated that I was going to start stream a little bit late. Yeah, you guys have a good day as well. I hope the rest of the day, I guess, the rest of the day is great for you. But I think I'm done. I think I'm good today. I don't know if I'm going to raid anyone. I might try. See who's on. Yeah, we can raid someone. Let's see. Mm, you can give it a go. Say happy Valentine's Day. Wish them good. Or I guess good good Valentine's. I don't know. <laughs> we just say hi. Okay. Oh, that's loading up. I'm also going to pop in. So, have a good day, you guys.